It's iPhone season, and if you're thinking about buying one, then you've got to watch this video first. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and you're watching Gadget Match. On this channel, we specialize in helping you find the right device to match your needs. And today, we're talking about the iPhone 12. Its story can be summed up in three parts. One, the way Apple improved on it to the point where it's closer to the Pro model than ever. Two, how its new A14 Bionic chip and the addition of 5G offer more than what the average consumer needs. And three, the introduction of MagSafe and what this might mean about the future of the iPhone. We've got a lot to cover, so buckle up. This is our iPhone 12 review. Two years ago, in one brilliant marketing move, Apple changed the way we looked at phones. Back then, the iPhone XS and XS Max were all the rage. Top of the line, the phones to get. And then there was the more affordable iPhone XR, what tech YouTubers might call a premium mid-ranger. A year later, Apple flipped the switch by changing their naming scheme. The iPhone XR became the iPhone 11, the phone for everyone. The iPhone XS and XS Max became the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max for users with more Pro needs. Well, the iPhone 12 continues that legacy. It's still the phone for everyone, but is also more compelling. Every few years, Apple redesigns the iPhone to keep it looking fresh and trigger that gadget lust in all of us. 2020 is one of those years. But Apple's new design isn't necessarily new. It's partly inspired by the flat edges that we first saw on the iPhone 5, and then later the original iPhone SE, which has got to be one of the most beloved iPhone designs. This is the iPhone 11, and if you ask me, there's nothing really wrong about last year's design. I kind of liked its rounded frame. It felt comfy when gripped. That said, this redesign is lit, and this new blue color is to die for. It also comes in red, mint green, black, and white. Apple's choice of materials and finish are the same, a matte aluminum frame and camera module that contrast nicely against its glossy glass back. It's bright and eye-catching, but also, sadly, it's most likely going to be covered up with a case. The only bit of color that peeks through is the camera module. One more thing, the high gloss finish picks up smudges, so if you're averse to that and plan to go caseless, white is the way to go. Speaking of the dangers of going caseless, Apple uses something called ceramic shield as the top layer of the display. They're not calling it glass, but it is, made with a composite of glass and ceramic. Apple claims the material gives the screen four times more drop resistance. Apart from that, apparently, the choice to keep the display flushed against the frame also improves durability. Tests by insurance company Allstate confirm these durability claims. So does this YouTube video by Everything Apple Pro. Just remember, ceramic shield is only used on the front of the phone and not on its back. I've seen a lot of incorrect assumptions on social media, so I believe it needs to be stressed. Apple is not promising improved scratch resistance, just drop resistance. So keys in the pocket, for example, are still going to leave you with some scuffs. If that bothers you, use a screen protector. And if you can afford it, I also recommend Apple's Apple Care Plus service. It's $9.99 a month or $1.99, and that covers up to two screen damage repairs per year at a minimal $29 service fee. Now, because it's the part of the phone that you look at the most, it's important that the iPhone has a great display. And Apple has been really good at delivering a solid experience, regardless of what it says on the spec sheet. That said, it's also been one of the biggest differentiators between the non-pro and pro models. The iPhone 11 has an LCD display with only a 720p resolution. The 11 Pro had an OLED panel, full HD resolution, and support for high dynamic range. This year, that gap no longer exists. The 12 and 12 Pro both have the same top-of-the-line Super Retina XDR display. 
and it's an excellent panel with rich colors, lots of punch and contrast, and enough brightness even outdoors under the sun. In keeping with its more flat design aesthetic, the display also rests flush against the frame and doesn't have those gentle curves as before. Also, if you look closely, the edges of the display have been pushed out further, meaning that even if the display is 6.1 inches like the iPhone 11 and 10R before that, the phone takes up a smaller footprint. Going by Apple's numbers, it's 15% smaller, 11% thinner, and 16% lighter. If you're coming from either of these phones and like the size, then there's not much of a size difference to worry about. If you're switching from an iPhone 8, 10, or 10S, then you're going to get a slightly bigger phone. Also, very briefly, if you miss the good old days of smaller smartphones, next month, the iPhone 12 mini with all the same specs and features as the iPhone 12 is coming. That phone will be smaller than even the 2020 iPhone SE, making it the smallest phone in Apple's current lineup. While the industry has tried its best to combat the notch and conceal the selfie camera, the iPhone has the same big notch it's had for four years now. It's there for a purpose, of course, to house the True Depth system that enables Face ID, the most secure facial recognition tech on a smartphone. While a completely edge-to-edge -edge display is the gold standard, until the industry can figure out under-display selfie cameras, the notch doesn't bother me. And Face ID remains my favorite way to unlock my phone. Of course, when COVID struck, it got inconvenient. And so I kind of wish that it had Touch ID built into the home button, like Apple put on the new iPad Air. Because I just don't enjoy having to pull down my mask or type in my passcode every time I'm out and need to pay for something. Maybe next year? The iPhone 12 has two cameras, a new 12 megapixel wide camera with a faster f1.6 lens for better low light performance, and the same 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. Missing is a telephoto camera. So if you want a zoom lens, you'll need to get the pro model. Aside from hardware improvements, Apple improved what it cheekily refers to as, quote, computational photography mad science, responsible for features like smart HDR and night mode. Night mode now works on all cameras, including the selfie camera. And Smart HDR3 is even better at balancing highlights and shadows, especially when photographing people against the light. But enough talking, let's take a look at some samples. Let's start with the new wide angle camera. The weather in New York has been mostly rainy, so these first few shots are from a cloudy day in Brooklyn. Sorry folks, the faster main lens means your iPhone 12 can take photos with shallower depth of field and that are brighter in low light, as can be seen in these examples. These flowers and fall colored leaves, here too in this shot of Chai's Afogato Sunday. Notice the second scoop is already out of focus. And since Chai loves ice cream so much, here's another nighttime shot of some pistachio ice cream. This is without night mode, by the way. Look at all those balls of bokeh. The iPhone 12 doesn't have nighttime portrait mode like on the iPhone 12 Pro, but because the shallower lens lets in more light, portrait mode does a really good job nonetheless. Speaking of portrait mode, the iPhone 12 is also supposedly better at depth segmentation. Things like glasses, or like in this example, strands of Chai's hair. Let's zoom in a bit. Not perfect, but not bad. This next photo was taken against the light. In photography school, they tell you never to do that, but with smart HDR3, go right ahead. Notice all the details on Chai's face despite the challenging shooting scenario. I wanted to show you night mode across all the cameras, so here's night mode using the main 1X lens, night mode using the ultra wide angle camera, and night mode using the selfie camera. Hardware-wise, the ultra-wide-angle camera is unchanged, but it's still sufficiently wide for dramatic shots like this. But thanks to night mode, it's usable when it gets dark. Although the resulting photos are softer versus the results from the wide-angle lens that have more detail. The iPhone has had a long history of being one of the best smartphones for videography, and the iPhone 12 is no exception. So take a look at this video montage using footage shot using the iPhone 12.
The iPhone 12 is powered by Apple's new A14 Bionic chip, the world's first 5 nanometer processor that, according to benchmarks, blows its competition out of the water. Now, I'm not that big of a benchmark guy. All I can say is that in my week using the phone, it took everything I threw at it. Graphic intensive games like Asphalt 9 and console style Apple Arcade titles like Way of the Turtle, shooting and editing videos using the new Dolby Vision format, and everything else that we do on the daily, catching up on social media, messaging, and surfing the web, because GadgetMesh.com is my daily habit. I hope you make it yours. Put simply, A14 is probably overkill for what you need every day, but it also means that if you plan on holding on to your phone for three, maybe five years, this phone will have enough performance power to last you that time. If there's one touchy subject about the iPhone 12, it's got to be about battery and charging. Some folks aren't too pleased that Apple no longer includes a power adapter in the box. And I get it. While folks like me might have plenty of USB-C chargers lying around, not everyone does, especially since Apple ships a different kind of cable in the box. I respect the decision to prioritize the environment. It's a tough, sometimes inconvenient one to make, and I respect that Apple is leading the charge. That said, it would have been nice if Apple included a store credit so that those who don't have a charger can get one for free. But it's worth pointing out that Apple did slash the price of its USB-C power adapters from $29 to $19 following the iPhone 12's launch. Lightning EarPods, which are also not included in the box this time around, have also been reduced. Another touchy subject is that teardowns reveal the iPhone 12 has a smaller battery than the iPhone 11, which shouldn't be that big of an issue considering how much more power efficient A14 Bionic is. However, the iPhone 12 also now supports 5G networks, which can drain your battery faster. So it would have been nice if we got a little bit more power built in. In my test, the iPhone 12 lasted longer when I switched to LTE mode than it did on 5G. And that's also partly because both T-Mobile and Verizon are aggressively rolling out 5G coverage across the country, so I'm almost always connected to 5G. Apple also has a smart mode that switches between LTE and 5G based on what tasks you're doing, but I didn't notice that significant of an improvement. The iPhone 12 supports fast charging with Apple's optional 20 watt USB-C charger and higher, like the ones that come with your MacBook or other third party chargers. By fast charging, I didn't mean the crazy speeds you get from Warp Charge on the OnePlus 8T that can get you from zero to 100 in less than an hour, but it's respectable nonetheless. Using Apple's 20 watt charger, the iPhone 12 got to 20% in 10 minutes, close to 50% in 30, 80% in an hour, and a full charge took about two hours. For me, the biggest news this year is this optional accessory called MagSafe, what appears to be Apple setting the stage for a portless future. For now, it's being marketed as a smarter way to wirelessly charge. And I get that. This over here is a sheet of magnet paper. By placing it on top of the iPhone 12, you'll see where the magnets are inside, almost like an x-ray. These magnets are what allows the phone to attach to this MagSafe charging puck, an optional $40 purchase from Apple. This charger only attaches one way. You guessed it, where the outline of the circle is. It also flashes this charging animation and makes this sound. If you own a wireless charging mat, you've probably at least once woken up to find that your iPhone didn't charge overnight because you improperly laid it down. MagSafe solves this problem. It's not a fast charger by any means. It only supports 15 watt wireless charging. In my tests, I got to 10% in 10 minutes, 57% in an hour, a full charge took about two hours and 45 minutes. So it's definitely more of an overnight charger, not one you should use for quick top-ups. Apple also sells a range of accessories that support MagSafe. Third-party accessories are also coming soon. If you want to learn about MagSafe, we're working on a dedicated video. You can click up here once that video becomes available or subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so that you get notified once we do.
With literally every smartphone manufacturer launching a 5G phone this year, it comes as no surprise that 5G is also the iPhone 12's headline feature. From its product page on Apple.com to the amount of time spent talking about it during the launch event. But let me preface this by saying don't buy the iPhone 12 just for 5G. Depending on where you live in the world, 5G might not even have rolled out at all. Here in the US, companies like Verizon and T-Mobile claim to be aggressively rolling out nationwide. And while that might feel like it in a big city like New York, I know this isn't the case for everyone. Speaking of 5G, this chiclet-shaped thingy is unique to US models. It's actually a window for the millimeter wave antenna, a different kind of 5G that's only currently supported by Verizon. It's faster, but not quite as reliable. At least not now. In fact, during my review period, I tracked down a few supposed Verizon ultra wide band spots, even a tried and tested corner of Bryant Park where I used to get speeds of up to 1,700 megabits per second. But alas, I could not get anything more than 200 plus this week. Even T-Mobile's sub six network was giving me faster speeds. Not that 200 or 300 down isn't fast enough. For example, I tried to download an entire Troy Sivan album and it completed in seconds. With 5G, you can also now make HD FaceTime calls over cellular. That's better quality video calls than was previously possible. That said, while 5G is here, there are going to be growing pains. But the good news is you already have a device that supports it. So is the iPhone 12 your gadget match. Last year around this time, I moved into the iPhone 11 for a good two months. I wanted to find out if as a pro user, I would survive off a non-pro model. TLDR, I really didn't mind at all. This year, Apple brought the gap between the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro even closer. And I wholeheartedly believe that this is the phone that most iPhone users should buy. If you have an iPhone that's two years or older and are considering an upgrade, now is a good time to do so. The iPhone 12 is an excellent phone, reasonably priced and backed up by a rich ecosystem of apps, services, and other devices all designed to work together seamlessly. There's nothing quite like it, and for that, it deserves the Gadget Match seal of approval. This year's upgrades are significant enough. A Super Retina XDR display, improved photo and video performance, 5G support, and that eye-catching new redesign. Sure, you may not need all of this today, but it will guarantee that your iPhone lasts you a good five years, which is the same amount of time that Apple guarantees iOS updates. Of course, these improvements do come with a $100 price increase from last year. The iPhone 12 starts at $799, but do consider spending $50 more to get the 128 gigabyte model. You won't regret it. Of course, there's also the iPhone 12 Pro, and we're dropping our review video next. But in very broad strokes, unless you need more storage, more RAM, and that telephoto camera, save your money and get the iPhone 12. And don't forget, there's also a mini version this year for folks who want a smaller phone. We'll cover that phone too when it launches later this November. Actually, that's a week or two from now. By the way, Apple is also still selling the iPhone 11 and iPhone XR, and we're working on a buyer's guide video to help you decide between those three phones in case you are wondering. And there's a lot of videos coming your way, so to make sure you don't miss any of them, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we upload. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff, including lots of sample photos and videos. And as always, make gadgetmash.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.